Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Nikki, back with one of our weekly tech videos. We appreciate you coming back and stopping by because this one, we're covering a subject that we actually get calls a whole lot about and that is piston to valve clearance. That's when you're putting in a bigger camshaft and it can be anything. This could be small block Chevy, small block Ford, LS like I got next to me. I got this LS2 that I always like working on and LS3, LS7, LT, it doesn't matter. When it comes to piston to valve clearance, it could be an overhead cam, k-series honda an rb nissan it doesn't matter it's all the same it all is pretty particular to the camshaft you're putting in a lot of times we get phone calls asking will this camshaft cause piston like what's the clearance you know what do i need to keep an eye out for the thing is there is no preset where it's like well we know for a fact this camshaft will do this there's too many production tolerances between all these parts you know and a lot of times these parts are used you think that your cylinder head has never been milled, but it actually has. You think this block has never been decked, but it actually has. Sometimes you don't know how much that piston is in the hole or comes out of the hole. If they do come out a little bit, the LSs are actually known to come out anywhere between five to 10,000 sometimes above the deck at top dead center, where your intake valve can crash into the top of the piston. You've probably seen me have this cylinder head before. I actually use it as a bookmark or a bookend at my desk uh, for all the technical literature on the one side. But we've used it in other videos talking about a few other things. So we're lucky that we have something like this because we're actually gonna put it on this engine. We're actually gonna do a piston to valve check. Go through the process on what parts and tools that you need. You're gonna need some Play-Doh, by the way, kind of a life pro tip here. Um, if you steal this from your kids, that's fine. You're probably the one that paid for it, but they're only 50 cents a jug. Don't be a jerk, go back and buy them some more. You know, be a good dad. <laughs> but we're gonna go over the whole process and we're gonna go over what you need to check and the minimum, minimum tolerances that you need. Keep in mind, you might not touch the valve to the top of the piston, but if it's too close, that's still not good either. Remember, all the stuff is moving at great speeds. Temperature makes things expand and change. You need a little bit of clearance here. So Dane is gonna bring the camera in to zoom in on this engine. We're gonna get started and show you exactly what needs to get done. Before I start, one of the things, you are gonna need some good like veneer style calipers here. These are some digital ones I have. You can use a dial, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. I also like using a push rod checking tool. The reason for that is on the valve spring, I remove the valve spring and always put our checking spring in here. These are real, real light. That's why I can move it with my hand and there's no way I am not strong enough. I am not like Arnold. I cannot move these other valve springs. So it's okay to use a checking spring on these tools, but not a real valve spring on these kind of tools. But I use it to make sure all the slack is taken out, but there's no preload in the lifter either. You don't need preload in a lifter when doing this kind of check. And of course, sockets and socket wrenches to turn the engine over and to tighten the cylinder and head down. So, Dane, let's get started. One of the questions we get a lot asked is, is do you need to run the head gasket on there? We say yes, put it on there. Do not go full torque, that way you don't compress this down so you can use it again so you're not having to buy another set of head gaskets. Once you bring the piston that you're checking up to top dead center, you're wanting to take a blob of your Play-Doh, I would say, smaller than a golf ball. This is, you don't need a whole lot when it comes to these kind of engines with a wedge style combustion chamber. If you took this entire blob, put it together, try to put it on top of this and try to bolt the head down, it would immediately just out everywhere. So you definitely don't want that. So take it, ball it up real good. Put it dead center and put your cylinder head on. It might go ahead and squish a little bit of it, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our torque wrench here and we're gonna torque it down to just the first step. Instance for these is only about 40 foot pounds. The next thing you're gonna do is get your push rod length checking tool out. Just like on our push rod length tool, uh, or push rod length checking video, you do need to rotate the engine over to where the camshaft is on the base circle to start. So I've already done that. Uh, but if you want to go check out that video kind of shows you how to find that quick and easy and also You need to be checking that too. So make sure you do that Here we go And now it is very simple you just rotate the engine around And as the piston comes up at the end of its exhaust stroke Go nice and slow. There's no reason to rush this here we go. It's gonna squish up there. 
And that valve's gonna chase that piston back down and it looks like we're doing pretty good when we take this off. We're gonna have a whole lot of room. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do this too quick and just do a couple rotations and you're done. So now we've taken the push rod length checking tool out. We no longer need it. We've undone these bolts. I've left one here to hold this head on. It's kind of, this head's kind of weird on this block because it's obviously being cut up, it doesn't sit on it very well. So give me just a second. Nice. And now we can take a look at what we're working with here. Do not touch the putty, Play-Doh clay, whatever you used, do not touch it just yet. I will tell you, do not use silly putty. I hope you know that if you let silly putty sit out for too long, it actually starts to flatten out. You don't want that to happen here. You need this to kind of hold form for a moment. So let's bring this back up to top dead center. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. You can see exactly where these valves touched this, this uh, Play-Doh here. And now it's as simple as taking a razor blade and cutting into it and see what the thickness is. The first one we're gonna do here is the exhaust valve. You can see we got a whole lot of clearance. We almost don't even need to cut this, but I'm gonna go and cut it with a nice fresh razor blade so we can see exactly what it looks like. You wanna be careful. As you can see, I'm moving some of that silly putty. You don't wanna move it too much. You need to get the exact thickness. And now you take your dowel calipers and measure. It looks like I touched a little bit. You want to be careful not to touch too hard or dent it. That takes up the clearance that you're trying to measure. But here, we have a lot. We have almost half an inch. All right, now let's look at the intake. The intake is going to be the one you really need to watch for. And you, you want to cut the thinnest part right up here. So let's go ahead and right there, perfect. Now this is a dish piston with a very small cam, so I know I'm gonna have enough clearance, but we're still gonna check anyway, aren't we? Let's see. Again, be very careful not to squish the Play-Doh or you're gonna have to do it again. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, I have well over 110 thousandths of an inch. We are perfectly fine here. All right, guys, everything seemed to check out just fine. That's kind of not surprising. I do have a small camshaft in this thing. This is actually going in a future project. We're going to be kind of going over this engine a little bit more. We might be using it in a future video going over the assembly of an LS engine. I've been wanting to do that for some time. It's mostly just getting the time to come out here and do it. But this will be going in a future project. I didn't put a big camshaft in there because when you see what I'm about to put it in, it doesn't need a big camshaft. This is a six liter LS2. It doesn't need that much power. But it does also have disc pistons. I built it with disc pistons because I was actually going to boost this engine. So that's even extra clearance. So yeah, we really didn't have much to worry about here, but we're glad we were able to show you the tolerances. Keep in mind, you're looking for right at about 100 thou on the intake and 80 thou on the exhaust minimum. A lot of times you're going to find a whole lot more than that. For a lot of you guys that are wondering about if you're watching this because of our like Power Max or Power Max Plus cams, I can tell you for sure they have enough clearance. Those are actually really mild camshafts, real soft, low profiles, so they'll be reliable, long lasting. You don't have to replace valve springs all the time. And you also don't have to worry about piston to valve clearance, whether you got dish or flat top pistons. So we appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Once again, Thank you, we do get these ideas from viewers like y'all, from phone calls, from our customers, from comments in the comment section. So leave a comment, ask us anything that might be on your mind and make sure to like, subscribe, share, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that sort of stuff. And we will see you guys next week for another tech video. Thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna go play with this some more.